Hey guys, Mr. Backberg here. In this video, we're going to be focused on finding side lengths and angle measures within parallelograms. Now, a parallelogram is a special kind of quadrilateral, and there are five properties that we're going to talk about that make a quadrilateral be a parallelogram. So, property number one is that opposite sides have to be parallel. Now for number two, along with those opposite sides being parallel, the opposite sides also have to be congruent to each other. Along with those opposite sides being congruent to each other, we're also going to have opposite angles that are congruent. Now our fourth property is that consecutive angles, so angles that are right next to each other, are going to be supplementary to each other. And our last property that makes a quadrilateral be a parallelogram is that the diagonals, if we were to draw them in, have to bisect each other. So those five properties take a normal quadrilateral and turn it into one of these special parallelograms. So here we've got a picture of a parallelogram and I'm going to put some markings on this picture based on those five properties that we just talked about. So the first property says that opposite sides are parallel to each other. And in order to show that sides or lines are parallel, we put arrows on them. So I'm going to put one arrow on this side and one arrow on this side to show that those two sides are parallel. But also these top and bottom sides have to be parallel to each other. So I'm going to put two arrows on those ones to show that those two sides are parallel. Now our next property says that along with the opposite sides being parallel, they also have to be congruent. So I'm going to put a congruence dash mark on the left side and on the right side, and I'll put two congruence dash marks on the top and on the bottom. Opposite sides are congruent, but also opposite angles are congruent. So this acute angle down here is congruent to this acute angle in the top right corner, and this obtuse angle in the top left has to be congruent to the obtuse angle in the bottom right. Now our next property is kind of hard to illustrate. We're looking at consecutive angles being supplementary. So I'm going to call this angle down here, let's call this angle A, and then I'll call this angle B. Remember, supplementary means that they add up to 180 degrees. So if we took angle A plus angle B, the answer we would get is 180 degrees. Now our last property is looking at the diagonals. So diagonals connect opposite vertices of a shape. So I'm going to connect this vertex up here to the vertex down in the bottom right hand corner. And then if I do the same thing going the opposite way, connect this vertex on the bottom left to the vertex up on the top right, then what our property says is that these diagonals bisect each other, so they split each other in half. And I've already used one and two congruence markings, so I'm going to have to use three and four. So this small piece right here has to be congruent to this small piece down there, and this other piece on the bottom left has to be congruent to the piece on the top right. So there's all of our properties illustrated in one picture. Now we've looked at what these properties are and how we can illustrate them, but now let's use them to solve problems. So what we've got is we've got sides of our parallelogram labeled with different expressions. And what we want to do is we want to solve to find our x value and solve to find our y value. Now the property that I'm going to use is the fact that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are congruent. So this piece on the left is congruent to that piece on the right. If we're thinking solving, what that means we can do is we can take these things and set them equal to each other. So we've got x plus 8 equals 2x plus 7, and now we're going to solve to get our x all by itself. Right now what I'm going to do is take this x and subtract it over to the right hand side. So we get 8 equals x plus 7, and then if we subtract that 7 over to the left hand side, we end up with an x value of 1. Now we can do something very similar to find those y values. Top side has to be congruent to the bottom side, so we're going to set those things equal to each other. So 6y minus 3 equals 2y plus 9. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract the 2y from each side. So we end up getting 4y minus 3 equals 9. And then I'm going to add that 3 over to the right hand side. 
So we end up with 4y equals 12. And then last step, I'm going to divide by the 4. So we end up with a y value of 3. Now we can do something similar looking at the angles as well. So in this parallelogram, we know that angle A is 70 degrees. And what we want to do is we want to figure out the measure of the other angles. The first property that I'm going to use is that opposite angles have to be congruent. So angle A has to be congruent to angle C. So angle C also has to be a 70 degree angle. The next property that I'm going to use is the fact that consecutive angles have to add up to 180 degrees. They're supplementary. So we can either look at A and B as a pair or A and D as a pair. Either way, those things have to add up to 180 degrees. So let's say if we go to 70 for angle A plus angle D, that has to equal 180 degrees. Then if we subtract the 70 over to the right-hand side, then angle D has to be a 110 degree angle. And then since angle D is 110 and opposite angles are congruent to each other, that means that angle B also has to be 110 degrees. So there's all four angles of our parallelogram. The only property that we haven't really dealt with yet are that the diagonals bisect each other. So let's draw out a picture that looks something like this. I've already got the diagonals drawn in and labeled with some expressions. Now these diagonals bisect each other, which means that individual pieces are going to be congruent. So this piece on the top left is going to be congruent to the piece on the bottom right. And if we look, both of those are labeled with expressions that have x's in them. Since those things are congruent, we can set them equal to each other in order to solve. So we've got 3x minus 8 equals x plus 1. We're going to do our solving, so I'm going to subtract x from each side. So we end up with 2x minus 8 equals 1. Then if we add the 8 over to the right-hand side, we end up with 2x equals 9. And then dividing both sides by 2, we end up with an x value of 4.5. Now as far as our other pieces of the diagonal go, this bottom left piece and this top right piece, those are labeled with y's and those are also going to be congruent to each other. So I'm going to put a couple congruence markings on those things and then I'm going to set those equal to each other in order to solve. So we've got 3y plus 2 equals 2y plus 4. I'm going to subtract 2y from each side so we end up with y plus 2 equals 4. And then if we subtract 2 from both sides, we end up with a y value of 2. That's going to be it for this video. Thanks for watching.